talking about. So when you're on this this cycle of uh, of destruction and you're in this uh, trigger trap training uh, in the death cycle, when it gets back into yourself and you get back up to this point of being in yourself, you have to make a choice. Am I going to live for myself or am I going to die for myself? Soon as you say, I can't handle this, I'm going to die to myself, you begin to get into a whole nother cycle, a cycle that's going to have you do self-discipline, which was prayer in this instance. You're going to believe that God is your savior and he's here to save you. And you're going to trust him to give you the discipline, not to cuss people out by submitting to him. And then that's when you get a breakthrough. Um, we have to understand that God is a God of breakthrough. We're the one that's hindering from our breakthrough because we don't want to change. We think that if we do us, that somehow God is going to be pleased with our, our fleshly self and, and magical things are going to happen. Guys, it doesn't happen like that. You got to die the self, uh, so that you can live for Christ. Um, and so these are the, the triggers, traps, and training. I go through this again because uh, some people who may not have uh, seen the earlier recordings, I try to re, uh, revisit the, the recording so that uh, you can actually understand what's, what's happening. Okay. Is that better? Okay. Let me see if I put this over here. There's probably be something on the next slide over there. Okay, so uh, this is uh, for the death cycle. You have triggers, traps, and training, and those are the transition pieces. And people get lost in the transition, like we saw on the step of destruction. Some people get triggered, and when the trigger goes, they just continue to get triggered until they get so stuck that the strongholds that are in their mind they never come out. They never come out of their head and then they never change. Um, that is a bad place to be is to allow the strongholds to keep you captive. And this is the stronghold cycle, of course, you're believing a lie. And that belief system is, is, is fed by the enemy. We, have a, a, we, we begin to be victims and we think about our wound and our wound tells us whatever we're gonna do and we continue down this cycle of, Believing a lie, I'm no good, or whatever it is. Um, and this cycle is a cycle of destruction when you allow the stronghold to the worldly stronghold or the ungodly stronghold keep you captive. We have to learn to come out and break out of our stronghold, break out of our mindsets. And this is uh, the, the, the three options. When you're making a choice, you're either going to break out of the death cycle, you're going to either you're going to break through and go to a higher level, or you're going to be broke down and stay in the cycle of death. So there's not too many more options, guys. Um, and again, this is the life cycle or the spirit cycle where we allow God to do what he does as we are saved and walking by grace. Um, these are the spiritual disciplines we talked about. Judy, this might help you if you think about how do you train to uh, get off the first step. Um, you can really begin to prepare, practice, participate, and then you can celebrate a party. Uh, and these are the disciplines that you can do as you're running this race that you have to endure to the end. Um, as disciplines, we have to learn how to watch, wait, war, and worship. That's going to be our way out. If we actually understand the disciplines that God has for us, we can get out of every situation that we're in. Uh, we just have to really trust God for it. And uh, so now when we're talking about operating, this is carnal, when we're operating in the flesh, Really, rebellion against authority is really a key, a key sign that you're really working in their flesh. When you're not listening to people, you're doing whatever you want to, uh, that's really a sign that you're operating in the flesh. Um, if you're acting in the spirit, you're going to be relying on God and his governmental order. You have fruit in the spirit and you also have fruit with works. So that's what the flesh cycle looks like. Now we're gonna be talking about the carnal cycle. Carnal Christians have um, the same issues 
that those that are operating in the flesh, uh, people that are carnal, they seem to want to work in two natures. That two natures is kind of a in-between step. They're spiritually, they, they know who God is, yet they don't really receive who God is for their life. Um, and so when you're carnal minded, you really mind the things of this world. The difference between the flesh and carnal is that those that are in the flesh are, are unsaved, but the carnal people are saved. They're saved Christians, but they're living as if they're not. And so that's how come they're called carnal Christians, because they have one foot in the, in the unsaved world. And, they, and they're staggering trying to get into the spirit realm, but they're stuck in this carnal place. Cause, and that's how you live by compromise. You're trying to put your feet in both worlds. And you cannot, you cannot, you cannot serve two masters. Either you're going to get your foot out the world or you're going to get your foot out the kingdom. And carnal Christians most often get their foot out the kingdom and they rely on their flesh. They, they rely on their power. They rely on their strength. They rely on their mind. They remind, uh, rely on their emotions. They It's all about them. Carnal Christians is all about them. They're living by compromise. They say they call on the Lord for their souls, but soon as a problem start, they're right back into their flesh fighting with the, with the, with the weapons of that they see. They're not using the weapons of their warfare, which are not carnal, but they're using their carnal weapons. So that's going to be the difference between someone operating in a flesh um, or, or flesh before you're saved does the, the, the life and that breakout we talked about last week. This week, we're going to talk about carnal Christians, which look a whole lot like people that are living in, by the flesh. And that's how come carnal Christians, they say that you're living in the flesh because you're just one step away from um, being unsaved anyway. Um, so when you think about it, are you sure you're a Christian? Um, this is, I like this slide and the scriptures that associate it with, because you can be religious, you can be a good person, you can believe the gospel, you can repent, you can be baptized, you can be a church member, and you could worship and still not be a Christian. You're doing all the right things, looking right, but your being is so wrong. Being a Christian means that you're being, not doing. Um, you, you're being led by the Spirit. You're not doing what the Spirit wants. You're being led because that's who you are. When you're operating in the flesh and you're operating carnally, you're doing things because either you're in trouble, you, you, you're you hurting, or uh, you, you want some type of power. It's all about you. Carnal Christians and fleshly people, is their focus is on them. They have the answers. Christians are submitted to God, listening to God, moved by God, and that's who they are. And so the question is, are you sure you're a Christian? Are you just playing the role? So here's the the carnal Christian, it says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Amanda said something today. When she prayed, she had peace. That's an indicator that God is on is in control because he is the only one that's going to give you peace, true peace. They'll let you sleep. They're not let you think about it. You're not going back over and over again because all of those thoughts and rehashing is going to be torment and you will not have peace that surpasses understanding. So to be spiritually minded, you know, when you have a trouble, trial, temptation, when you come out of that thing, you'll know you're out because you will have peace. That's a true indicator that you are living by the spirit and not by the flesh. Now you might think, well, I, that person, well, I don't know what happened with, with Amanda or uh, the person may think they got over on her. But it's not really about her retaliation to whatever's done to her. It's about her response to what was done to her. Um, and that response should give you a, a time to think about it and end in peace. People can make you mad all the time, but if they make you mad, you have now given your rights over to another person. Don't give your rights over to another person. Keep your rights and give your anger to God. Um, and, and not to man.
Um, so because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So this word in enmity or hostility, the carnal mind is actually hostile against God, angry, uh, rebelling, just coming back. That is what you're going to look at like in a carnal Christian. And I gave, I'm giving, I'm going to give you a, a picture of what that looks like. But now if you look at the steps, you start out in the flesh and then you, you no, that's the, that's the picture. You start out in the flesh, you take a step into the ways of being carnal. You're not really taking a step further to get into the spirit. Okay. So once we have accepted Jesus in our heart as our savior, we take a step into the spirit realm. These realms have two separate, um, when you're there, you have two natures. You have a sinful nature and a saved nature. When you're carnal, you are working in both nature. This mixture of two natures is called carnal. Until we choose to die daily to our flesh, our carnal nature puts us at risk of never fully stepping into the realm of, of God. We have to die to self. When we die to self, it means that we're living for Christ. You cannot, guys, have it both ways. It's either your way or God's because if it's your way, your carnal ways is enmity or hatred or hostility against God's way. I'm not telling you this because I'm thinking that this is what it is. I'm telling you this because this is what the scripture says. And so you have to choose. Are you going to be carnal or are you going to be spiritual? And so the carnal triggers yourself. You're, you're really your trigger. Brothers and sisters, I do not address you as people who live by the spirit, but as still worldly. So he's talking to Christians and he said, I'm not talking to you by those that who live by the spirit. I'm talking to you guys that are in here that's living worldly. Um, mere infants in Christ. That even goes to further to tell you these people are not unsaved. These people are babes in Christ. And a babe in Christ can be in Christ for 40 years and still be a babe. I gave you milk, solid food, for you uh, were not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not worldly and not acting like mere humans? So we have to understand the things that cause us to be worldly are these, th are these three things, the lust of the flesh, eyes, and the pride of life. I'm telling you, pride is a horrible thing. But so is being lustful and wanting everything that you see. So the lust of the, of the eyes is sinful desires of things that we see, things that we have to have. They're visibly appealing. We begin to covet them. Um, and when we're coveting things that are physical, we're not really coming into the things of God. And then, of course, the flesh, the lust of the flesh is when your flesh dominates and overruns you. Usually the flesh, which is said in the first one, is in rebellion against God. So the first thing, when you know you're operating in the flesh, check check you. Are you obeying God or are you rebelling? And if you're rebelling, you're operating in the flesh. And then pride. The desire of every human being is to be his own or her own God. You become arrogant. You self-promote yourself, greed, and all types of Evil stems from pride. Pride is, is, is a human killer. We have got to learn that we cannot live in pride because it opens the door to so many things that leads to our destruction. So here's some signs of carnal Christians. They lack intimacy with God or with people. You, you don't even like people. Well, <laughs> You lack generosity. You'd rather take than you would give. You compromise your morals, especially when pressured. When the pressure goes on, you begin to compromise. You begin to say, oh, well, stealing a little bit or, or sleeping around or, or, or whatever it is. You begin to compromise because of the pressure. 
You've got to learn to stand under the pressure because you're yoked to Christ. You sacrifice your family for status. You lack spiritual uh, influence uh, because you're not submitting. You have people that might want to follow you, but since you're not submitting, you won't have uh, spiritual influence because what you won't do for someone else, they're not going to do it for you in the spirit realm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Reluctant to give up sin. We love our sin and treat it like a teddy bear. We think that it's good. Materialistic. We lack fear of God. We receive God's discipline instead of his devotion. I thought that was really interesting. We would rather be condemned and whipped by God than actually knowing that God loves you, that he cares for you, and that he and he di is disciplining you because he loves you. But the person that's carnal, punishment is their way of relating to God, not through love, but through punishment. And it, then it's passed on to your children, not only natural children, but it's going to be passed down to your spiritual children. Um, God's grace and mercy are given, but you don't even receive it. He gives you a pass. He gives you a pass and you don't even receive it because you feel like you got to just continue to punish yourself and continue to live carnally. You would rather be driven by their flesh than by their faith. Now, I'm not going to say a show of hands, but are you carnal? Because the first step in realizing it is admitting where you are. That's when you can begin to change. And so remember Romans 8, 6 and 7 says into me against God. That means hostile. The carnal person fights because they don't trust. They are into self. They have a lot of doubt. They have a lot of fear and a lot of disobedience. And then they live a life that's defeated. They're, they're on that stronghold cycle in, uh, that's, gift, that's taken you to death. It's a very defeated life, living a carnal life, um, because you're really fighting against God. You're not fighting against anyone else but God and yourself. When you're truly a, a man or woman of faith, you're going to mind, you're going to have the mind of Christ, you're going to trust him. You're going to have faith in him. And the word and the Holy Spirit is what you're going to live by. And you're going to have a life of victory. And so someone who's described as carnally minded, it means that they're operating in their flesh. That's how come that step where your one foot's on the first step and the second foot's on the second step because you have your, your feet in both worlds because you don't want to let go of your flesh. Uh, in the flesh, you're going to be insecure. You're going to be selfish, unforgiving, given to anger, and you're going to be prideful. As a result, a carnal person may struggle to believe in the promises of God and faces uh, challenges related to sin, impure thought, self-doubt, and um, orphan mentality. We're going to be talking about an orphan spirit because that's going to be part of your stronghold. Really, when you're in carnal, carnal life, you have five forces that are working against you um, to keep you in a box. And we'll talk about that, those, those five areas. Huh? Ultimately, a carnal person has not fully let go of their fleshly nature, making it difficult to allow God to lead them into purity and freedom. Just think about it. Because you won't let go of the flesh, you are trapped in your mind full of hostility. If that's not torment, guys, I don't know what is. That, that is a horrible place to be trapped, hostile against God. They have not lost their mind, so they lose their mind to defeat we have to understand, since you won't give up your mind, you haven't lost your mind, you want your own mind, you lose your mind to a, a mindset that's defeated. That's the price you pay for being carnal. These are 16 characteristics now of the orphan spirit, because this is a stronghold. Um, unbelief, you get stuck. You live by condemnation, you compromise. You... Um, 
you, you live a life by striving. You're feeling unworthy. Uh, you, you live by distrust. Spiritual authority, you can't really walk in spiritual authority because you don't really understand authority. You operate in fear. You believe lies about the character of God. And when God pulls you out, you forget that he helps you. Uh, you, with, you withhold good things. You uh, walk in offense big time and fear uh, of separation, um, doubting, and then fear of intimacy. These are 16 characteristics of an orphan spirit. And the orphan spirit is just one. This is just one guy. This is just one stronghold. It's one thing if you were just caught by one thing, but carnal Christians are trapped in so many different ways that the enemy wants to make sure you do not go into the spirit realm. He wants to make sure that you feel that you're unloved, that you're not wanted, that everything that you do is not worth it. He's gonna, he's gonna make you feel like you're unworthy, but you can't believe the lie. A person with a carnal mind has no anchor or security in a life because Christ is not their savior. You know who their savior is in a carnal Christian? Himself. Very good, students. <laughs> we are our own savior. And that is the life of a carnal Christian. You say you believe, but when the chips come down, you really don't believe and you put all stock in yourself because you're your own savior. That's a carnal Christian. So if that's really describing you, that you do what you do because you know, because you know, you say you love God, but when the chips go down and your back's against the wall, all that goes out the door and we, and we just do us. Face it, you're carnal. This is the trap of a carnal Christian. Because the mind is hostile against God, Right there in the middle, this carnal Christian is hostility. And the reason why they got hostile is because someone left them. They left them as orphan. An or orphan spirit refers to a spiritual condition in which some Christians profess outwardly to know God as father, but, uh, uh, but internally, it's a contradicting belief that you feel like God has thrown you away that you feel like the father figure has, has gone away. You relate to Jesus. You might even believe in Holy Spirit, but the orphan, fig, uh, the orphan spirit makes you believe that God the father is only there to punish you. And then the spirit of, of unbelief is gonna be uh, uh, the next thing or another thing. It doesn't go in this circle, but Spirit of unbelief, and it's actually a sin of unbelief. You can look at that too. It's actually a sin of unbelief, um, is a responsive heart in rebellion against God. Unbelief is a spiritual state of never um, involves the mind alone. When you unbelieve, your actions are, are unbelief. Your, your, your soul is in a place of unbelief because you don't want to uh, trust God. This is what the stronghold of carnality is built on. Spirit of abandonment is a fear of being uh, deserted and left alone to fend for yourself, suffering from a great loss and pain of grieving. So not only do you feel like there's no father, but you also suffer because you think everyone's gonna leave you. And then pride, well, that's a big one. This is really, I've already hit on this a lot. You have a self-importance about yourself that you think that you're all this. Um, and this is the most dangerous part of pride is that it deceives you to not even realize that you're operating in it. You can't even deceive that you're working in pride because pride makes you think that you're right and you are so wrong. You are deceived. Pride is very, just think about it. What's the, what did Satan say? I want to become like God. He wanted to be, he wanted to be like, he wanted to take his throne. And then rejection is a demonic force that causes or worsens the feeling of being worthless and unwanted. Do you see the traps and the strongholds that you have to overcome when we get to, and there's a whole lot of other stuff that then uh, begins to tack on. 
all of these spirits, they don't walk alone. Um, when I when I when you'll see in the book, you'll see the spirits that are associated with this. I'm gonna show you some of the battles, some of the battles that you're fighting when you're a walking in a carnal. But there's so many other spirits that I could not really expound on in this. I just wanted to give you a picture. This is why to be carnally minded means death. We lock ourselves in our own personal cage. We're the one that's locked in. Other people aren't locked in. We are locking our own self into our own cage when we're carnal. I like this picture. Hostility is denial when used when someone's caught or confronted with problem behavior. You just begin to deny. That's hostility. Someone tells you you're wrong. Hostility says, no, I'm not. So these are six battles. What we're fighting when we're talking about these strongholds and cardinal or being carnal. The first battle is protection. Um, you're going to, instead of fighting um, for your safety and security and shelter, when you are attacked, you become your own defense. You become your own protector. That's going to be what the stronghold is going to have you do. Since, since God can't protect you, I'm going to protect myself. And the issues that you're having with this is trust, pride, and security. Those are the battles when you're going through protection. You can read in the scriptures that are here where, these, where this comes from. The only way to have a victory comes when you trust God as your protector. You have to know that he is your protector, that he's fighting for you. Provision. Uh, you fight for, the, for uh, what is needed in your life. First, uh, physically or emotionally. But if you're attacked, you want to handle it. Dependency and poverty will be your issue uh, with, with provision. And again, you have to trust the Lord as your provider. Uh, your psychology, this is your brain. This is your mind, your knowledge. You know so much, you've learned so much and you pursue in God's wisdom. That's what you're fighting for. You're fighting for the knowledge of God. You're fighting for the word of God. You're fighting so that you can Live and operate in pursuit of God's wisdom. But if you don't do that, and when you're attacked, you run into your own mental stronghold and you run into your own false reasoning. That's going to be a battle that you're going to face when you're carnal. Um, issues are the basic belief about God and the concepts of the world and the word. Your victory comes when you trust God as your teacher. Do you trust God to teach you and lead you in all things? Not the philosophy of man, but the truth of God's word. I had made this picture up today. I thought that this was like, this is what I saw when I was doing this. The, the bottom step is your fleshly carnal step. You've, got, you've gotten off of the flesh step. You're stepped onto the carnal step, but because you're self-righteous, you bypass the spiritual step and you step right into pride. You put yourself higher than God. And because of unbelief, you, you overstep God so that you can do what you want to do. That's hostility against God. This, this was the picture that I saw about being hostile against God. What a, how, how messed up is that as a Christian? Hmm. Battle with parents or authority. Your fight for love and relationship and authority and family. But when you're attacked, you run into rebellion. You escape and retaliate. So you're angry, you begin to rage. The issues with relationship and generational sin and bondage is what you're fighting. And your victory comes when you trust the Lord as your father. If you don't, if you've never had a father, a parent, or somebody that loves you, trust God. He, he can lead you and guide you as a, as a true parent will. Fifth battle is partner. A battle for intimacy and comfort with another person. Part, having a partner is a great thing. But when you're attacked and you're carnal, you run into perversion, promiscuity, and you self-pacify. So that might be with a drug, that might be with a person, that might be with whatever you self-pacify, porn or, 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 or anger or whatever, however you self-pacify. If you don't have a partner, that's what you're going to do. Food, yes, yes. So people self-pacify with a lot of stuff. Um, issues with isolation, you're lonely 
and never feeling comfortable, no matter what somebody does, and how they try to extend themselves to you, you never feel comfortable. It's never enough. You're never satisfied. You always want more. Um, that's a place of torment. The victory comes when you trust in the Lord as your comforter. Will you receive the comfort of God when you don't have a partner? Will you allow the Holy Spirit to comfort you? And then the sixth battle that you face being carnal is the promise. You fight for, <laughs> instead of fighting for commitment and loyal and expectations, when you are attacked, you just run from the problem. You don't stand for the promises. All you do is run right into the problem. You are so problem focused that you don't even know what the promises are. You don't think about the promise. Remember, when you're carnal, you're overstepping the spirit, which has gave you promises, and you're walking in your own self. That's unbelief. And then the victory for the promise comes when you trust the Lord as your covenant keeping God. Do you trust God? Are you walking in any of these six battles? If you are, the victory's here. The issues that you have here, the scripture's here for you to begin to work it out so that you can step back and say, God, I don't want to be this. Put both feet firmly into the spirit realm and let God lead you out of this place of despair. But oh, we don't want to do that. It says here, how do you break out of the cycle? How do you how do you die? That was Judy's question. You did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with God. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also uh, be glorified together. And so the father's desire is to set us free. In order to be free, we got to die to ourselves. If we don't die to ourselves, we live for ourselves. That's going to subject, subject you to bondage, um, controlled by force and controlled by fear. That's what bondage will do to you. If you choose to die to yourself, you enter into the spirit of adoption, becoming a child of God with all the rights and the authority of God. God has given us so many rights, so many things that we can do in his power and in his spirit. But we so often as Christians live such defeated lives because we don't understand our authority. We let our mindset and the world dictate our freedom. And it's not freedom at all. It's actually bondage. And that's how we live, totally in bondage. So we have to make a transfer. We have to exchange our, re our rejection for acceptance. See, this is another stronghold. Acceptance, adoption, belief, acknowledgement, and humility. This is another stronghold. But this is a stronghold where it's centered on the spirit of God, and, and centered on operating in gentleness as opposed to operating based on um, hostility. Because remember, there's godly strongholds and the ungodly. Now just think about it. If you're in an ungodly stronghold and your life is centered around just being angry, think about if you had this stronghold. What if you understood you were accepted? What if you understood the adoption and the rights that came with it? What if you actually believed God and acknowledged and you acknowledged him? What, what if you actually became humbled by God? These are the exchanges you make. Ex you have to exchange rejection for acceptance. You have to exchange your orphan spirit to knowing you're adopted. Unbelief, you have to exchange for belief. Abandonment, you have to exchange for acknowledgement. Pride, you have to exchange for humility. And hostility has to be exchanged with gentleness. Gentleness doesn't mean that you're a punk. Gentleness, gentleness, gentleness means that it's power under control. Hostility, there's no, there's power in the flesh and there's no control because you blow out in all those different ways that we just talked about. There is no uh, spiritual power and being hostile against God. I mean, I don't know how you can figure you can be hostile against God and still walk in power. It doesn't work like that. You will be powerless because you're actually fighting God. 
When you're carnal, you're fighting God. You're fighting God. You're fighting against the God you say you believe, but you're not walking in the, in the belief that you say you have. You must receive the spirit to live by the spirit, but you have to die to self. Your mindset, your past, your rock had to die. The, the creation of me is rock being hard, um, not having any emotions, um, manipulating people, crushing people and not caring. I was horrible, guys. I was a horrible person. And I got to the point when I was a, being a Christian and being so hard, I, I had to change or I would have died. I would have died. And my first assignment was to find a new purpose for a rock. You have to repurpose your pain because if you don't repurpose your pain, you will die by it. And I repurpose what rock was. And every time, every time my brother calls me rock, all I do is smile because I know Jesus is a rock. I know he's a rock. He told me that when I was searching for myself, he's a sure, firm foundation. And so me being a rock, I wanna, I wanna help people back to that foundation and not build their life on sand. I had to repurpose my life. Some of you need to repurpose your life because you're thinking the life that you have is all you got. It's a lie from the pit of hell. You have a destiny and a purpose that's bigger than what you guys are living out because you're stuck. It's time to break out. Don't we want to break out and be something different? Why are we letting our problems define who we are? I don't get it. I don't get it. We've got the greater one, the Holy Spirit, willing to break through everything that you're going through. And we'd rather do it ourselves. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I know it's the devil that's, that's doing it, but we are submitting to it. So don't blame the devil. We're submitting it to it. He's not making us submit. We're doing it on our own, on our own course. And I don't get it. I don't get how you can listen to these cycles and still stay in it and not even care. Uh, I don't get it. It, it. it angers me. They don't, it, it angers me not because I'm angry at the people. It angers me because the devil has you so deceived that you don't even see it. You don't even see that you're stuck. And if you do, you're like, this is what it is. Oh, that kills me. God spoke everything out of nothing. And you think he can't break through your stuff? No, what, what, you, you put God in a box. I threw the box away a long time ago, guys. You got to throw that box away. To break the cycle, you must receive by faith. Nothing else. You don't do it by fear. Faith, you got to have faith. You got to have faith. Breaking the cycle and living. It, it's about your pursuit. What are you pursuing? Now that we know we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, if you know that, <laughs> you this is how you receive it, by your pursuit. You have to consume the word of God. You just can't read it just because eh, it's something to do. You got it. You got, I hungered after that word. I ate that word until it transformed. I wanted to consume the word until it consumed me. Everything that that word said, I wanted in my life. I wanted it for my life until he just broke rock down. He broke her down. He broke her down his word. I remember desiring. I said, God, I just want to hear your voice. And I will cry. Can I just hear your voice just once? I desired him so much because I got tired of listening to the devil because that's all I heard. I wanted to consume. I, I chased after his face. I just wanted to see his presence. I wanted to see, because I knew in his presence there was joy forevermore, but I, I didn't know how to see them. I didn't know how to approach him. I didn't know how to enter in. Oh, I know how to enter in now. I know how to see him. I know all I got to do is knock him step and he's right there. We're talking about how to live by faith, guys. You got to pursue the promises of God. You got to choose the promise over the problem. Okay, I had all of these problems. I could either choose to die in my problem or I could pursue my promise. I didn't know how I was going to be whole. I didn't know how I was going to get out of abuse. I didn't know how I was going to do a lot of stuff. But I pursued God 
and I stopped having the problem overrun me. I pursued to abide instead of hide. Some of us are hiding in our stuff. We're hiding instead of abiding. Can you pursue God to hide inside of him? Pursue. We had to cons be consumed by his love and passion for God. We had to be, have constant faith to quiet the constant fear. I know what it's like to live in fear. I do. I do. We also have experienced living in constant faith. Faith is hoping for something that you don't see and you don't know and you've never experienced. But because you have had an experience with God, you're going to pursue faith every time. You're going to pursue Christ for his intimacy to restore you, to heal you, and to free you. Do you want intimacy like that so that you can change? Pursue Claim the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to acknowledge him. Acknowledge that the Holy Spirit can change you. Acknowledge him when he's in the room. Acknowledge him when, when, when you have your, 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 your hands laid on you and, and something transferred. You've got to pursue God because guess what? He's pursuing you. <laughs> Do you actually realize the way that you pursue God... I, I'll ask you, this is a, this is a, a real question. Let me pull this down so everybody can see, so I can see. How do you pursue God? How do you pursue God? Anyone have a thought on how do you pursue God? Prayer, reading the word. Prayer, reading the word. This is, this, this, this is how you pursue God. Listen, if someone's chasing you, you're running. They're pursuing you. God is pursuing you. How do you pursue God? You turn. You're right there. All you have to do is turn. You don't, you don't have to run. You don't have to read your Bible. You don't have to do all that stuff. Oh, he's in pursuit of you. Instead of you running, all you got to do all you gotta do is stop and turn, and bam, you're gonna run into his glory. Bam, you're gonna run into his presence. Because he is in her pursuit of you. You only want to do so many things to please God. And all God said is do is turn, just repent, just turn around and see who I am. But we won't do that. We want to run after this. We want to run. We want to do what we want to do. And we're wondering why we're getting what we're getting. We're pursuing our own stuff. And we're letting God just continue to run after say, I'm here. Turn around. I just turn around. I just, I'm right here. I'm right. I'm breathing. I'm breathing right on you. Come, just turn around. I can't see God. She's right behind you. We make it so hard. We make finding him so hard. It is the breath of me. And the thing is so funny. This is what's so funny. Not only is he pursuing you, but he's also consuming you. So not only is he behind you, but he wants to consume you and take your heart from the front of you because he also says, you are the apple of my eye. That means he's right here. He's right in your face saying, I see the reflection, Charlene, of you. When I look at you, it's in my face, it's in my face, it's in my face. So he is all around you. There's no place that you can go where he's not because he loves us that much. It's a God of the spirit. There's no place you can go where he's not. You can't find him in front of you. Turn around. If he's not, he's, he's, he surrounds you with glory. He surrounds us. 
with his glory. In his glory, our, our story, in his glory, everything changes. I'm telling you, not something that I thought, not something that I heard, it's something that I experience every time I get into the word, every time I teach the word, every time I pray, his glory just fills the, fills the place, guys. He's that real. He's right. He's right here breathing. He's, he's right here breathing on me. But guess what? He's right there breathing on you in, in California, in Arizona. No matter where you are, he's right there. He's, he's right there in Oklahoma. He's there. He's there, Judy. He's right there in the room. Can you feel him? Yes. He wants you more than you want him. Why do I know that? Why do I know that? How can I say that? Because he died for you. And we won't die for ourselves. That's how I know. We won't give up our life. But he said, I'll give up. That's how I know. He loves you because he's proven it and who he is. And we won't die to anything because we want self-righteousness. We want our carnal self. But we want the power of God being carnal. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Nope. Whatever you pursue, you receive. What are you pursuing? <laughs> what do you have in your life? Because that's what you're pursuing. Because whatever you pursue, that's what you receive. I'm pursuing God in everything that I do. I breathe for him. I breathe for him. I, I have some this morning. Two or three hours of sleep. Man, they can attest to how much sleep I get. Because I'm pursuing, I'm pursuing trying to get these lessons done. I'm pursuing trying to do the writing. I'm pursuing with the counseling. I'm, I'm pursuing with the me. It doesn't matter because I understand. I woke up this morning with a few hours of sleep and I said, but how do I be rested? I don't even know what time I fell asleep. I know I went to bed early, but I was up studying and I had to get up early to get the word out. I had to, I had to get this teaching done. I had to, I had an appointment with this. It doesn't matter what I have to, I'm pursuing God. And I know he's pursuing me because there's no way I can't be exhausted. There's no way. There's no way I can't be exhausted. I'm doing so much. There's no way this is me. God has pursued and consumed me. He's that real. Anyway, what a good, God is so good. I went to Shelton and I taught him about the cycles and what we were going to do. And I could have cried. I told him about what we were going to do, the hammer ministry and the feather ministry. And I told them, well, I'll probably do the hammer and the feather ministry. After the service, Guy came up to me and said, let me pick this up. He had me pick this up and I don't know why he had me pick this up. But now I know why and I'm gonna give it to you. He was reminding me, I got my feather. I gave me my feather to say, it's just operate in faith, I got you. Just all you need is a, is a little bit of faith. You're, you're, you're moving in the right place. You're going the right way. Just keep the faith. And when the guy gave me this, all I could do was say, God, I thank you. No matter what happens, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you that I'm pleasing to you. I thank you that I'm, I'm in the right place at the right time. This was so profound. The week last week, he gave me a rainbow, and the day he gave me a feather. God, there's nothing when you God is in pursuit of you that he won't do. <laughs> he is awesome. He's awesome. Don't give up. Don't give up. I don't care where you are. So this is the seven layers of faith. There's a lot of different faiths. You teach bishop. It's fifty. It's fifty types of faith. <laughs> I'm only going to give you seven layers of faith. 
The first layer is a measure of faith. Uh, this is the starting point. You've got a measure of faith to deposit it wherever you want. You have dead faith. We don't want to have dead faith. We have little faith, genuine faith, growing faith, unwavering faith, and the greatest faith. The question is like, what level of faith do you have? When you're walking in the spirit, it's faith to faith, level to level. There is no way that you can outstep God. When you walk in the spirit, he keeps taking you higher and higher and higher. That's the good news. We have to be made, God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. No matter what you do, you have to have faith. No matter what you do, you have to have faith. Why? Because the just live by faith. It is through faith that the righteous person has life. God wants to give us life. If you want to know the difference when I send this out, you can click this link and you can get the details on the various types of faith, where you are and how to move to the next level. So for your homework, are you fighting in hostility or humility? Um, Who fights humbly? That's kind of true. It's not what I think of when I think of fight. You have to fight. Okay. When somebody's in your face and you're ready to punch him, you're fighting to stay humble okay. until um, humility becomes who you are. Right? You're, you, there's a fight to do the things of God. It's not going to be natural because our natural self is carnal. So we have to, to fight to get into the flesh. You got it? So what are the steps of faith you in and explain the step of faith? So that's what I have for the homework. Are there any questions? Sorry, I got emotional because it's just, God is just so good. Any questions, comments, concerns? No, Apostle, that was a great analogy that, that spoke volumes. Which one? Teresa? About the pursuing, about the pursuing. Yeah. That, that spoke volumes to me. Amen. Well, I got excited because even if I'm on the step of transition, I just have to turn to God. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I can just turn even if I'm at the <laughs> lowest step. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's good. I'm glad you learned that. Just turn. Yes. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> that was good. Um I'm not gonna say I have a whole list of carnality because I didn't, but even if I had one thing I didn't like that, mm -hmm. I also kind of picked up on the um when you were talking about enmity mm -hmm. and how I would get mad about mm -hmm. having to do the right thing, mm -hmm. about knowing the word in that situation and mm -hmm. really wanting to do something different mm -hmm. than what the word said, whatever my body or mm -hmm. mind was telling me. Mm -hmm. And that was a good indicator to me that I was operated in carnality mm -hmm. and then um lastly i was the first thing that really really upset me during the service was and i knew then in fact i was like that's fine was when it said that success the desire for success was carnality because mm. i'm thinking in my mind you know i'm thinking it was supposed to desire to be successful you understand what I'm saying? But then I started connecting it to my gambling situation and the battle to not be, uh, you know, to always be wanting money, more and more money and stuff. And so I thought that is what referencing because I didn't, I wasn't really making the correlation until I started thinking about the, the desire to gamble. So yeah, but I was, I was bothered by it. I was like, no, why do we, why do we not want to be successful? Why, you know what I'm saying? That makes me feel like I'm being defeated because that is a personal desire. And so I think that's why it angered me so much is because mm. it's something that I really want. I want success, but not just like the worldly success. I want success in all areas of my life. You know what I'm saying? So that, that was something I wanted to get some uh, understanding about. God wants us to walk in victory. He wants us to be more than victorious. Um, success is usually self-focused and self-derived and self-defined. 
And that means it's self-focused. Okay. We want to walk in the victory of Christ. We want the promises of God. And those promises that he gives us has nothing to do with, with us. It's him saying that this is what we have to offer. We're just walking into it. Our obedience makes us successful. That's that. If you want to know a definition of success, it's obedience. And we are often so not obedient. We rather do us than God. But victory is more of a word. Are, is your life showing victory? Are you walking victoriously? Because if you're not, then all you got to do is find out where you're supposed to be and shoot for that. And where you're supposed to be is supposed to be from God's perspective, not our own. Okay. I, I'm a person, like, I can relate to that. Some things there are carnal nature and it's not everything. I can't relate to that. What if a person is just straight up fed up? Just fed up? Then give up. If you're fed up, get up, give up. We're not fed up enough that we're ready to give up our life. We get fed up enough to take things into our control. I mean, a person can only take so much. Exactly. They explode. Well, then that's when you give it. God is not a God of explosion. Because people want to talk about the reaction, but not what led up to it. People it, don't want to talk at all. It, it's not about. Except behind somebody's back. It's not about. It's not about and I'm angry. Well, Cassie, you're 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 angry uh, right now. Great. But that's no, it's not great. It, it 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 is great because that's that's where you are right now. At least I'm not bottling it up anymore. I can say that. But I'm not doing it the right way. I don't know how to do it the right way. What because I've never let it out. You have let it out, Cassie. I exploding, yes. So <laughs> We have to understand that the power of God is stronger than our anger, than our last place that we are, that his power is made strong in our weakness. That's what the word says. We really have to learn to give our weaknesses to him so that he can make us strong to walk through those times of weakness. That's going to be uh, a, an important factor of walking strong in Christ. All right. Any I, other? Go ahead. Oh no, I just, I mean, I, I appreciated the the just the separating out and, and the way that you did as far as carnal and fleshly, because I had not, to my knowledge, um, remember uh, being taught that. And the other thing that just the timeliness of it, because I had done that assignment that you'd given me for a rise three, but it's out of the kingdom mindset, the advancing the kingdom book. And the mm -hmm. homework was to basically it's the, you know, ungodly attitudes. And it was, you know, like moodiness and the, replacing it with a godly attitude, which is constant, um, selfish, being selfless. So just mm -hmm. finding that it, it's to, anyway, I just appreciate it because it's like these are the Anyway, it was just helpful. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I won't go on. Yeah. Yeah, I had him flip it's the other It's a kingdom way. mindset. Uh, the carnal and the fleshly, but he had me flip it around. And now I see why. Because we're mm -hmm. fleshly before we're carnal. Right. <laughs> right. But see, like, sorry, did I interrupt Wendy? I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. I think Judy had, had something. Then we'll come back to you. Judy? Yes. I'm so grateful because I've had a a hard time knowing what the flesh and the carnal was is, and you've really God really made it through you to re let us know really what carnality really is. Mm. I used to be carnal. I used to be. I mean, really, God got a hold of me a couple of weeks ago, and there is no carnal. I mean, all that carnal stuff that you just described was me. It was me. It's no longer me, but it was me. Well, I can tell you something for sure, uh, Judy. Until God comes back in a cloud of glory, we all have carnal ways that are still living in us that we have to overcome. 
because none of us can walk in this physical world and not have some carnal stuff that we're dealing with. And so great that you've dealt with a lot of things, but when you think that you've arrived where there, everything you do is spiritual, well, arrived. that's, that's when there's danger. So um, just be mindful of uh, Cassie, then, oh. then Latte. Go ahead, Cassie. Go ahead. Does that make sense, Judy? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I haven't arrived. I just do that. All that stuff that you were talking about, and there's more carnality than that. Yes, there but, is. But all that you described, all that was in on it was me. Gotcha. And he got it got rid of a lot of it. Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Cass. Well, I mean, you kind of answered what I was thinking because, like, like I got all this stuff from mine, but I hear God. I hear His voice. Right. But then there's this other side. Yes. But you just said it because in my head I thought we weren't supposed to be carnal at all, and like. You know, we all are going to be fighting with something. Not, none of us, like I just told Judy, none of us have arrived. We all have issues. If we were spirit men, we'd be Jesus. And that's nobody's Jesus. We don't have to yield to our carnal nature, but that's where the fight is. The fight is not yielding to it. That's where we have to overcome because we all get angry. We all get pissed off. We all you know, Fight. get her. We, we all have all of these things. Coming grace for it to happen. Well, I, it doesn't really matter how it happens. The question really is, how are you responding to it? I'm not talking to you. Well, no, I, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to us in general. We all have to learn to respond in the spirit. That's what we have to learn. <laughs> fight well, we're not going to fight. I don't want to fight with him because I love him. We're, well, we're not, we're not, we're not fighting right now. We're just, well, okay. Well, we want to be honest, right? Okay, Lute. So when you were at that, can we go, are we, is it possible to go back on some slides? If I wanted to talk about the part where you get offended, Evie, because that was happening to me in my class. What class? It was talking about. It was talking about being carnal minded, but it was talking about being in a place of offense. And it was it had been happening to me in my class. It's been happening to me. I told you with the guy that ran up the, that stole my identity and ran up a bill in my name that once they moved into my house. Uh-huh. And it's, it's trying you mean this slide? No, it was black and white. I mean, I remember reading it in black and white. Oh, I don't know, Apostle, but I just know that it was talking about being in a place of offense and it, it, it was in that you stay in there and it had to do with anger and offense. It could be carnal traps or strongholds. I don't know, something like that. But I don't know, but it was talking about, you're just, you. I was talking about anger and offense. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was something that been trying to creep back up in my life because of because of me spending less time in the word with the Lord. Right. Yeah. You know, um, so I just I feel like that was a that was a that was a trick and a trap, that that place of offense. Mm -hmm. And even today during service, I mean. I mean, it was happening, you know, and, and I just was like, I can't, I'm not going to let the enemy, you know, get the victory in my life. I mean, and this is the thing I've come so far and it's like, how could I be a baby Christian? And God has brought me from so many three things. He's brought me through so many things. So how could I kind of like relapse, I guess, so to speak, and 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 digress. You know what I'm saying? It's about our pursuit. What are we pursuing in our life? Are we pursuing holiness? Or are we pursuing our own dreams, right. our own needs, our own mentality? Because what you pursue is what you receive. And when are we going to get to the point where we want to pursue God 
And I'm not saying that you're not pursuing God, but pursue God to the point where you're experiencing the pursuit. Right. And I mean, to me, it's kind of like, in my mind, it's like, like I used to, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I used to, you know what I'm saying? Have that continued set prayer time that I start my day with, that I have my set fast days. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That you, you have your time with the Lord, whether it's when you're driving yeah. or whatever, you have your, your, your time to speak in tongues, your fellowship, and then you're working in ministry. I felt like all of that combined with fellowship, I was myself. Then as soon as I start letting one thing go to, you know, and it's this big pattern and it's just like, who am I? This isn't me. Well, it says in the Bible, those who endure to the end and we don't have enduring power. That's how come I have that little infinity. You've got to endure in this race. Mm -hmm. You can't quit and walk away. I don't want someone in the pit with me that's going to quit right. because that means that's going to give my life up. Right. And I feel like this, all the uh, bad relationships that I stayed in and I was just so adamant about fighting for them and things were going to get better, that there's no way that in this relationship where it's all, it's 99% all God's giving me nine, I'm giving him 1%. You, you know what right. I'm saying? That I would not stick it out and fight for this love. I guess that's the best way to explain it. Fight for um you know, I just want to express the love of God that he's to others and myself and him that he's expressing to me. And it's just, it's just not adding up. You know what I'm saying? I just, I'm just believing him for it. I'm not, I'm, and I'm, and I'm seeing you, you show that piece, that little diamond looking thing. Mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, just in my mind, I was just asking God to remove those. Right. Pieces, just so that spirit in the middle would be there and it would just well, be all him. The strongholds, when you talk about transfer, you still need some protection. God wants to protect us. He wants to protect the way that we can be protected and walk in human uh, gentleness is if we understand that that we are adopted, if we understand that we are accepted, if we acknowledge, you know, all of those things help build that stronghold around us so that we can stand strong. The problem becomes when we start taking out pieces, okay, I don't need to believe that unbelief thing comes in. Well, I feel rejected. So now acceptance comes in and the strongholds are being built as we begin to release a part of who God is, the enemy is going to be quick to put in who he is, right? And then soon as the stronghold has shifted, now we're no longer walking in gentleness, but hostility. And now we're in the stronghold of the world or the devil. So this is what I'm thinking. This is in my mind what I'm thinking that I can do in the spirit that because God can do anything. I'm thinking that I don't have to step on those steps, right? Because you can skip those steps in the natural. I mean, those people step over the spirit of God, those people that were in rebellion. So why can't I step on the spirit of God and it is now an escalator? I'm going all the way up with the Lord. That, I don't want to touch those that, 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 yeah. was, that was the last one where I showed you're going from faith to faith, the level to level. Yeah. That's where we want to do. We want to walk by faith and not by sight. That's how you take the escalator. It's one step at a time. It's not a quick thing. It's with every decision, with every choice, with, with everything. We're just taking a step. Okay. And that's how we go higher. Amen. Okay. Thank you guys for hanging in there. For those who did, I know we lost a couple people. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for who you are. We pray that we do understand that we are going from faith to faith to level to level. Lord, we love you. We honor, we praise, glorify, and magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen.